not just Chinese army. It is a general term. So this is again a detail in the same context that is red put in red in the first paragraph. The missing soldier, the missing Chinese soldier, who missing Chinese soldier, the People's Liberation Army soldier who went missing. Okay. Now we don't find anything else in red. So the information about that soldier is over. Now if you go ahead in the middle paragraph in blue has been written. So this is repeated. The main action, what of the news is returning action. So that is repeated in the first paragraph has written, India has written and in passive voice, he has been written, but the same thing. Okay. Now again in green, in the first paragraph in green, you find today. What is the time of returning today? The day rather. And here it is specific today, this morning. Okay. Now again in the third para in blue, there is he was returned back. Again in passive, the same action is highlighted. And to whom that is additional, he was returned back to Chinese officials. Now where in the first para at the Chushul Moldo meeting point. In the last para, the violet or purple uh, color uh, as it is showing is at the meeting point. So uh, the details are given in the first para and here it is just repeated by omitting the other two, three words like Chushul Moldo meeting point. Okay. So this is how uh, uh, the news is drafted. Uh, we shall move on to uh, next slide to see the parts of uh, uh, parts of the uh, news. Uh, we have now separated it under these various heads. What I just discussed, they have now been put in a different way, in a different form. Uh, one below each other, what, whom, who, whom, where, when, why, like that. So the reporter started collecting in his notebook, he might have jotted. He's going. What? what? Ending. Of whom? The missing soldier. Whom they are going to? Whom they have uh, handed over? They have handed over to the missing Chinese soldier. Your internet connection is unstable. What should I do? I take a pause to uh, check uh, the chat box if uh, to see whether there is any problem. Just a second. I will resume. Uh, I had a message in, uh, I had a message here that the internet connection is unstable. That is why I uh, checked the checkbox, but there is no comment. So I hope that everything is going well. So I, let me continue. Uh, so this is, these are the points. What, whom, who, whom. Okay. So whom is to uh, hand it over missing Chinese soldier and in detail now, the uh, matter that was scattered over different paragraphs is taken together here. The missing Chinese soldier who stood across the LAC and was apprehended in Demchok sector of Eastern Ladakh by the Indian troops on 18th October. So this is the report. This is the information that the reporter might have collected about the soldier. And that is uh, given at one place. Now who returned him? Indian army. To whom Indian army returned the soldier? To Chinese officers. Where did it return? At the Moldo meeting point. Where the to meet in instances. This morning. And one more thing as uh, given in the last para of the news. After completion of formalities. So there are three phrases regarding the time of the event. One is today, that is 22nd October. Third is 22nd October morning, that is this morning. And third is 
after the completion of formalities okay now in the second and third paragraph you have some other details also uh, some official details how after the soldier went missing chinese army contacted that is notified the indian army as per the protocols and then uh, what action did the indian army take and how this is a procedure according to a relevant agreement that is already been there so according to the relevant agreement between china and india chinese army notified the indian army and then indian army took the necessary action found it completed the necessary formalities and then handed him over so these are the details they can be given they can be spread they can be put in at various places in the news as the reporter or writer chooses to of course this choice has so many other things that are not to be discussed here because we have only one uh, hour to deal with but there are various factors that decide how the news is to be drafted okay uh, first is word limit so whether it should be compact or with so many details elaborate one okay secondly for whom it is what kind of audience or readership you have you might be knowing that there are at least two types of newspapers one are uh, broadsheet uh, one is broadsheet and another is tabloid so broadsheet audience is different from the tabloid one broadsheet audience is generally supposed to be serious learned educated interested in serious matter okay as against the uh, tabloid audience uh, that uh, uh, is happy with a cheap kind of uh, or superficial kind of information mean for entertainment or uh, information like gossips or some sensational things etc etc so he is more interested in emotional appeal as against the broadsheet uh, audience uh, uh, that have uh, or that look for some kind of intellectual and rational appeal so depending upon all such uh, so many things uh, the news is to be drafted but the first thing is acquiring information getting the data facts and figures as much as possible as many as possible so that later on uh, uh, the choice can be a matter of choice comes in you can exert your uh, right of choosing the things as per your requirement okay but you have you should have a lot of things together first and then uh, these supporting information sources can also be mentioned chinese defense ministry or indian army uh, in a statement said these are the things that the reporter at the beginning before the drafting might have jotted down and out of this data this these facts and figures he had uh, produced the final product now let us move on see the structure now you might have come across a structure if you have smelt it okay try to see uh first we could see the headline and as a matter of fact it should be very brief it is written in bold letters the punctuation is also different from the other matter just observe afterwards if you have not observed it so far in your dailies okay how the headlines are written what about their grammar what about their font okay what about their wording phrases expressions catchiness etc but the function of the headline is to catch the essence of the news and to catch the reader to attract the reader to uh, read the following news in detail now after headline there is always a date and this date as i discussed just now is the date of report making not the happening of the event the date on which the reader the the reporter has uh, uh, handed over the news to the uh, publishing company publisher for publication okay or rather it is the date of the uh, publication itself so one day difference might be there either 22nd or 23rd on the 22nd uh, or on the 21st the reporter might have collected the information and drafted the news and handed handed it over to the publisher and uh, daily might be uh, the date of the daily might be 23rd but not beyond that 
The next part that is very important is intro or lead, which sums up all the major information as we just saw. What, where, how, who, when? At least these details are summed up in the very first paragraph. That is a general convention. This is not a rule. You may find some news in other different styles and formats also, but this is a very general and common and widely accepted format. In which in the very first para, which is called as intro or introductory para or lead. All the main points are covered and some other less important details might be given in the forthcoming following paragraphs. But the lead has to sum up all major facts and figures. And then what comes, then what follows is called as body. The other details in which there might be some background of the event, some uh, future prospects, aftermath, effects, etc., etc., depending upon the nature of the event. And in some news, there may be uh, a last para called as tail or conclusion. It is not very necessary. It may not be found in each news, but generally it is there in uh, some cases, uh, which again might sum up the things, uh, might uh, use some quote from some important uh, person uh, in the context of the matter discussed, or uh, they may mention the names of some sources like news agencies or some persons like PTI. Okay. So uh, this is the structure or form of the news report. In short, uh, uh, the five parts of a news report, essential parts of a news report. So see, if we again look at our news that we just read, uh, this was the headline, that was the dateline, and in red, there is intro, in blue, there is the main body, and the last para may be treated as still our conclusion, which mentions again some of the points which are already covered in former two paragraphs. Okay, I need not read this once again. We are uh, we may run short of time later on. But it is the same thing. It had three para and they can be distributed under these three heads as intro lead, then body, and then tell and conclusion. See once again, the introduction, the lead covers all the major facts. India has written the missing Chinese soldier today at the Chusul Moldo meeting point and something more about the missing soldier himself and how he was found. Uh, recently, you have uh, studied under the same paper, uh, the words and phrases. Okay, so you know the concepts or terms like head and modifier. If it is very clear to you, then this kind of news drafting will not be very difficult or comprehension of such a given news will not at all be difficult because you will be finding the most pivotal, central, crucial parts of various clauses and sentences that are heads. And then what are the pre-modifiers, what are the post-modifiers, all these things you will be uh, parsing uh, in a proper manner for nice kind of comprehension. Okay. Now let us come to the point of headline. Headline is again a very important uh, element to be considered and given due uh, thought okay uh, because they are to be drafted slightly in a different way the other matter of a news uh, is different from the headline headlines have a specific uh, their specific style and grammar and form so with these examples, uh, we may discuss the matter to some extent, not in detail. Uh, see, these, these were various possibilities. If you uh, uh, browse in various uh, newspapers or if you have a look at various newspapers of the same day, uh, you will find uh, similar news, same, same event. Uh, so same or similar news, uh, news reports in uh, those different, different papers like India Today or Times of India or Herald. Uh, maybe Asian age, etc. Any. Uh, so those uh, news had these kinds of uh, uh, headlines. 
none of these headlines is uh, incorrect or false okay every uh, every everyone here uh, is quite uh, good uh, it has uh, some uh, content of its own uh, each one is uh, uh, conventionally correct okay as far as the grammar and punctuation is concerned so it is just a matter of choice as i mentioned okay how much uh, word limit you have whether you want to make it in four four words or six words or eight words and uh, what is your point of view what is the reporter's point of view what he or she feels important that will matter but otherwise any of these headlines is quite right so you may say india returns chinese soldier missing in eastern ladakh another paper might say indian army returns missing chinese soldier third one might say missing chinese soldier returned fourth missing chinese soldier found in eastern ladakh so here the place has given some importance in the next one missing chinese soldier found and returned both the things both the acts are uh, given importance emphasized and the last one as it is given to the uh, news that i had chosen uh, india returns missing chinese soldier strayed across lac so see this uh, particular uh, headline its uh, features uh, see uh, we have seen this variety now if you consider the verb form uh, in 3 uh, to 4 uh, that is sec, uh, third fourth and fifth one you find is v in form of word again you have you might have recently studied uh, the verb forms there are six verb forms three uh, uh, tense and three tenseless okay this is it doesn't uh, actually indicate uh, any specific uh, tense like present or past and this is the feature of newspaper headlines that they use uh, either uh, simple present tense that is vs form of verb uh, india returns india returns the actually see the fact or the event has taken place so in normal course if we have to be grammatically correct then we should say that india returned or india has returned chinese soldier but instead and in the news in the actual news we have uh, used the tense form like that only the verb form is like that only means either vs form or uh, ved form or complete uh, 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 sorry perfect present tense that is india has returned but in the headlines either the headline would say india returns or chinese soldier returned so in active voice we shall be using simple present form and in passive again of course the same form but without any auxiliary verb like to be or to have that is necessary for the perfect tense or passive aspect okay just the vn form the past participle so this is actually grammatically incorrect one might say but for the headlines that is how they are made just because they are short of space so to cut the line short to omit some words to cut it short they drop auxiliaries like to be or to have and they say just return or found so that is one characteristic of the headlines that you must remember because in the exam also you are supposed to uh, draft a very good uh, headline in conventional way okay so you must remember these things second aspect is regarding the short forms in the news actual in the news proper we have a, uh, the full expression the full term that is a uh, line of actual control but if you have to write this three long words together in the headline okay it will be very long so these uh, people these journalists and reporters have a tendency to use the abbreviations and short forms wherever possible so lac this is the short form of line of actual control okay so 
don't forget these things you can uh, draft the headlines in a variety of ways but you should think whether the uh, uh, the what will be certainly there but apart from that in addition to that uh, what do you think more important whether the place or the time or some any other agency depending upon that you will uh, uh, accommodate it into the headline now uh this is how your question would read you understood how to make a news you understood what are the parts of a news what is the structure of a news what are how the uh, headlines are to be drafted but how the question will appear in your exam that is your main interest so this is how generally the question reads draft a news report using the points given below in 150 to 250 words okay so first thing is the limit word limit you should not go beyond you should not cross the given limit of words and secondly the points will be given in this form not like wh form you will not be given ready made wh elements what where why when how but you will find the same in the points given in such a way this is the same thing with some difference here and there so these are the wh things they will be provided to you and on the basis of these things you will be drafting the news now we shall read one more news very fast now inter ministerial team reaches telangana to assess flood damage there was a date of course it might be in some other slide next slide the five member inter ministerial team of the central government has reached telangana as part of its visit to assess the extent of damage due to heavy rains and floods in hyderabad and other parts of the state it may be recalled that hyderabad city witnessed the highest rainfall in the past 100 years on 13th and 14th of this month several parts of the state also suffered huge losses due to the heavy rains and floods the inter ministerial team headed by joint secretary parveen vasishtha has met the senior officials of the state government at the secretariat in hyderabad a short while ago the team has rb kaul from finance ministry k manoharan from the agricultural ministry sk uh, kushwaha from the road transport and highways and one more senior official from jal shakti ministry as members the team will visit rain affected districts and also flood affected areas in hyderabad during next two days so this is again a very small and fresh latest news uh, in yesterday's uh, news bulletin so again see the blue and the red and the green and the violet pertaining to uh, who and uh, whom and where and where uh, when etc okay 22nd october the headline the intro and other parts see here the lead or intro is the five member interministerial team of the central government has reached telangana today as a part of its visit to assess the extent of damage due to heavy rains and floods in hyderabad and other parts of the state and then the body provides other details especially who are the members of the team and what is the background of this thing so the first uh, part of this first sentence in the body it may be recalled so as i mentioned previously uh, the body may provide you some background information it is not to be provided in the intro itself it should be there in the body that is the details background is the thing of a past and intro should be there with the elements that are very fresh latest present not of the past so in the body you find this background information it may be recalled that hyderabad city had witnessed highest rainfall in the past 100 years on 13th and 14th of this month and several parts of 
the state also suffered huge losses, floods, etc., etc. Then, who is the uh, chairperson or head of the team? Who are other members of the team? To whom did they meet? Where did they meet? At the secretariat in Hyderabad. When exactly? A short time ago. A short while ago. So this is these are the details. Again, in the third pair of the body, some details have been given. The three four uh, names of the persons, member persons of the team. Okay. And in the tale, it is told uh, what this team is going to do because it is yet to be done. So in the body, uh, they, he referred to the past, and in the tale, he is referring to the future. What will be the aftermath? What will be the future? What will be the future prospects? What may happen? What will be the next part of the story? Next part of the event? Next stage of the event? Okay. So the team will visit rain affected districts and also flood affected areas in Hyderabad during next two days. So the story of this particular thing will be made after two days. But it has been predicted, it has been foresighted, it has been indicated, okay, as a matter of the tale. So the tale may deal with consequences, it may deal with some special comments, it may deal with some sources of information, and it may mention some future prospects or effects or aftermath of the present event. Okay, I hope you have uh, uh, followed and understood these parts of the uh, news report very well. Now, a few words about the characteristics of a good news, good news report. So, good news in the sense, good news report, not whether the news is good or bad, not that, whether the report is good or bad. So, at least one of the following characteristics should be there. And these characteristics are with regard to the intended audience for whom you are writing. As just now I mentioned uh, the two uh, uh, categories of newspapers, dailies, broadsheet and tabloid. So this is your intended audience, not just this one, but uh, 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 literate people, illiterate people, youngsters, students, farmers, politicians, uh, workers, uh, old people, young people. So these are different target audiences. Depending upon them, depending upon their uh, uh, interests and likes and inclinations, uh, you have to take care what to tell and what not to tell and how to tell it. Okay, whether the language should be simple or difficult, uh, complex, etc. Uh, whether it should be uh, crispy one um, or loaded with uh, jargon, uh, simplicity, uh, etc. So, depending upon uh, that is called uh, that is a matter of style, the way in which you use the language. But here, the other things as far as the contents are concerned, these are the uh, six characteristic features of any good news report. Uh, it is not expected that every report uh, reflects all these six. Uh, features. Uh, at least one or two should be there in any news report. So one is proximity, that is closeness to the audience. The happening that you choose to uh, uh, publish or inform them about, uh, that should be uh, close to them. It may not be very important, but uh, uh, geographical or regional closeness, you might say. Okay. Or proximity to their interests also. Secondly, it should be prominent one. The news item, the main event that you are covering, it should be prominent one. It may not, it may be a distant one. But if it is a prominent thing, then the people have interest. If some great earthquake uh, uh, takes place in, uh, uh, say, uh, West Indies, which is far, far away from. But the event is very prominent or some celestial event. Thousands of light years away from us. But the uh, event may be very prominent. So you should cover it. But uh, in most of the cases, the 
essential characteristic and very common characteristic is this third one that is timeliness that is freshness here and now now today's newspaper is tomorrow's rubbish so the relevance of any news is for today only because people don't know it up to certain uh, moment after that moment after one hour after two days the news becomes stale it is no more news it is not new it is not fresh so timeliness is a must in any news okay then human interest should be there it should be of general human interest most of the readers should read it it should not be for the for just a few of course some news are to be there they are there but i am speaking about majority of the news that a paper covers a daily covers they should be of general human interest sometimes oddity is also important as we uh, always say uh, that a dog bites a man is not a news but a man bites a dog it is a news why because it is very odd it is very strange very uncommon thing so this oddity is also sometimes important while covering uh, a news and sometimes the consequence the news may not be very important uh, as it appears today but it consequences might be very important afterwards so that can also be covered today seemingly simple thing may have some uh, severe serious great consequences so they can also be covered so at least one or two characteristics out of these six must be there in a good news report and one more thing when you draft it you are not supposed to give your personal opinion the news good report should be very impersonal and objective it should not reflect reflect whether you like it or not your likes dislikes prejudices concerns are not to be reflected or they should not shape the way in which you uh, put the matter in the news okay now suppose come to our uh, this present practice the very event that is going on for last few months and it will continue to be so that is about about the online lecture series in which you and me are presently involved here on this platform so suppose you are given this information and a question as usual is like this that draft a news using the points given below in 150 to 200 or 250 words so these will be the points that you as reporters might be jotting down for your rough work before the actual draft okay so organization of online lecture series on youtube as you are a party to this as you have experienced this as you have attended and watched such lectures in previous uh, 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 weeks and months you are familiar with all these things okay uh, some uh, some things might be new to you some of these facts might be new but some of them you are familiar with okay so organization of online lecture series on youtube for students of rural colleges in konkan the students are of arts science and commerce faculties konkan means again the three four districts like ratnagiri sindhudurg raigad okay who have organized who are the organizers the uh, three uh, colleges of mumbai university namely two model colleges that is dalvi college and ambedkar college and one is third one is pendergar college uh, the thing that you might um, may not be knowing is uh, when it was you uh, know uh, by whom it was inaugurated so that fact is given honorable pankaj kumar ias state project Direc uh, director of rusa now who is providing technical support here mr tahir patel and dr varsha gaikwad of pendergar college okay Uh, who is the convener and mentor of this activity that is consortium 
for a, people coming together and working for a common cause, a common great cause. That is Dr. Vinayak Dalvi. And what is the purpose of this whole endeavor? That is to provide academic support to the students during the critical situation of the pandemic by inviting eminent professors to deal with topics from actual syllabus. Okay. Now, in the past, at least I know as far as English uh, is concerned, because these lectures are going on for various subjects under these three faculties. But as far as you, the English students are concerned, you have so far um, uh, listened to uh, and joined the sessions by uh, Dr. Sachin Labde, Dr. Nilufar Barucha, Dr. Anil Farakte. Okay. These are like these were the lectures for you TYBA English students, and there is one more person, Professor Tejas Bhosle, who uh, manages who manages all these things as far as the resource persons are concerned to contact them, to uh, inform them, to schedule, to fix the date and time, again to be in rapport, take the follow. -up. So these things are done by Professor Tejas Bhosle. So this is the what and who and why and how of the activity. So if this is given, this will be our intro. Actually, uh, if time had permitted me, I would have liked you to draft this news in these two, three parts. So, but uh, because of the shortage of time, let me myself uh, do this and read it out for you. Uh, see the intro or lead of this story, how it would read. A consortium of Vijay Lakshmi Vishwanath Dalvi College. So, so, as far as possible, if the space is there, then the details should be there. If you are short of space, then you might just say Dalvi College. But if you have enough, enough space, then you must mention the three names in detail. So, that is Vijay Lakshmi Vishwanath Dalvi College then Vishwabhushan Bharat Ratna, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar College and Dombivli Shikshan Prasarak Mandal's K.V. Pendarkar College. So that is how you should jot down basically. Cutting it short, you might do it later on if you want to. But given, if, if the space is given, if it is provided, if it is enough, if it is allowed, then all those details can be used. So take care to collect as many details as possible, not for the sake of examination, but the purpose of uh, having such units in your syllabus is to make you aware of these different domains, guide you uh, for all such different, different careers and a sort of orientation in this direction to uh, fields like journalism. Okay. So, uh, not just passing the exam or drafting of 200, 300 uh, words news for the sake of exam, but after this, taking it as a profession and vocation. That is the main purpose of having such units and modules in your syllabus. So, uh, that is why I, I am providing you with this much information that what you should do as a true journalist. You should be very particular and you should collect details as many as possible. Okay. And they should be correct as far as the dates, the figures, names, spellings are concerned. Okay. You should not make any haste while collecting the information. So this will be the intro or lead. So these three colleges and their consortium has organized. Consortium has shabda matla nastattar have organized matla You should be uh, aware of the spelling um, grammar also. Ek shabda badalla ki tense kasa badalla, spelling kasa badalla. So, team, as the three colleges are there, one might be in haste uh, using the word have organized by forgetting the word consortium at the beginning. But consortium is a singular. Okay. And therefore, you should say has organized and not have organized. Now, this is the part of ADD. As far as the process of report making is concerned, once you draft it, 
what should follow is editing you should not immediately uh, submit it to your uh, authority because it might have many many errors and gaps okay so you should look for it self editing and again there are editors sitting over there in the uh, press if you go wrong there are they are there to correct but it is your responsibility to send the things as correct as possible so when you give a second look second thought for the sake of editing you might find such mistakes that i have written have organized actually it should be has organized okay now why to support the students of art science and commerce colleges in konkan region during the critical period of pandemic and now the body will have some other details some contents might be repeated of course but some might be totally new so when it was inaugurated sorry who did inaugurate it and when in the last month by whom mr so and so who is that person project director of rusa of maharashtra state and who else was there dr vinayak dalvi the convener and mentor of the activity now what else this consortium has or why they have decided this to conduct these lectures so that so that what is the purpose so that they may be helpful for the students in their academics not just general knowledge not just extra information that we found in several webinars today but specifically in academics their respective syllabi if they get that information and knowledge then it will be more useful for their exams so that is the purpose so that is additional information in detail provided in the middle paragraph uh, of the body now the technical details because this is not known to all anybody cannot understand what does it mean by um, uh, online lectures so how the actual process takes place so penderkar college has been the host it conducts zoom meetings then they are streamed live where on the levi college youtube channel with a live chat facility further so still more information they are also available for students on the same channel if they miss them for reasons like network issues so this again highlights the fact that these people this consortium colleges and these people have quite uh, they have organized this uh, by, by giving uh, a detailed thought in depth not just uh, to carry some uh, vague superficial useless futile futile activity not for that for the sake of these things to be truly useful for the rural students they uh, take care of such things that what will happen how would they get it if the network is not available at the time of live streaming then that should be available to be watched afterwards also so the youtube channel and it is there available on the same channel if they miss them so this is in keeping with the tone and focus of the news what you have mentioned earlier the same uh, thing or the same point is con continued to some extent in the following paragraph and lastly it is inverted commas it is in inverted comma i quote this is a great privilege and students from sindhudurg ratnagiri raigad and palgar and thane districts manje kokan region ha ithe district madhe explain kela hai and they will be greatly benefited by it told professor tejas bhosle to our correspondent so as i mentioned earlier the last para may mention the source or may mention some actual quote or actual words or actual response or reaction to some uh, person authentic person who is concerned with that particular activity or who is present at that time at that particular place when the event takes place and then your news becomes more authentic your report becomes more credible reliable and authentic when you quote certain true persons from the site from the scene from the event okay so this person professor tejas bhosle 
told to our correspondent uh, this thing that how it will be benefit benefit beneficial for uh, the students of these five districts, and that is why as they are his words, they are given in quotes into inverted commas. They are not the words of the reporter. They are not your words. They are the words of the person, and therefore they must be given in this way in this manner. So this is the body, and it has no tail. Or that last para might be taken as a tail also. So remember, I have come. In, I have come almost to the end of the session. So again, to recap, the points to remember are: the correctness of facts is very very important, and the seven elements or seven types of facts are: what, where, why, when, how. Okay, who, whom. So various parties, various persons involved are very important, and their names should be properly taken, noted down, and then mentioned without any spelling mistakes or without any uh, confusion. Who did what? The sequence and the relations, the associations must be very correct. You should not attach one thing to some other person to whom he is not concerned. Okay. If you have doubts. on the very spot you should uh, get them clear from the sources now the report should be complete so complete the report in all senses in the sense it must have headline dateline introduction body and sometimes tail then only the report is complete in all respects then the grammar in general should be correct no doubt but uh, especially as it is different in case of headlines you must be quite aware of it grammar of headline and grammar in general it will be taken care of especially during the phase of editing so you will edit for word limit you will cut it short or add some more words make it more elaborate if there is space because you are paid the reporters are paid on the basis of number of news also a number of words also in that case if you write much below the limit then you will have to add if you are a, a good reader a usual, usual reader of dailies then sometimes in especially in local newspapers you find some paragraphs uh, which are repeated exactly as they are in the same news of course this is not a good practice but why am i telling this to you this is a practice bad practice mal practice actually but they do it for the sake of increasing the number of words because they are paid on the basis of number of words you should take care that you are elaborate enough at the very beginning so that the need of this kind doesn't arise just to uh, again copy and paste uh, one of the paragraphs once again in the same news okay then the grammar should be taken care of during editing punctuation capital small etc the case and overall correctness of the matter as well as the language and last but least is uh, 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 la la last point uh, which may not be very common uh, but it is important is creativity after a lot of practice uh, slowly you will have a mastery over it and you will start be uh, start to be very creative you will write the news means you will use the language very creatively uh, especially uh, for uh, headlines uh, you will start using new words you will be compounding uh, two different words or you will be uh, if you are well versed and a master in morphology then you will be converting uh, words into various other forms Uh, in a uh, novel uh, manner okay and uh, you will be coining sometimes very very totally new words uh, okay uh, then uh, it naturally attracts the reader so what is this word i don't know this what is the meanings it it appears to be something new in this news so i will start reading the news also after i read the interesting headline then using some quotes also if they are relevant to the news uh, sometimes you will refer to 
some historical or cultural uh, events in the past so you will allude to uh, the past uh, and some other places and persons and matters so in due course uh, it will be refined the practice of drafting and editing news uh, will be refined uh, you will enrich yourself and become perfect report reporters and journalists so i express this wish and hope at the end that uh, not just for the sake of examination but you will start writing news items news reports for the sake of journalism printing press printing media print media so you will start your journey as a journalist today or tomorrow and i wish you all the best for the same so thank you for patient listening best luck for your future and once again i thank uh, the spendergar college team and all uh, members of the consortium for this endeavor and uh, giving me this opportunity to be with you this morning thank you very much thank you thank you mr shekhar dhanyawad sir hello hello ha ah, sir how is it you hello hello सर आवाज येतो ना हो येतो येतो हा सर धन्यवाद सर तर आपण आमच्या विनंतीला मान देऊन या विद्यार्थी विमुख उपक्रमामध्ये सहभागी झालात आणि सहकार्य केलात त्याबद्दल मी या तिन्ही महाविद्यालयांच्या वतीनं तसेच विनायक चळवी सर यांच्या वतीने सुद्धा आपले आभार मानतो आणि असेच प्रेम आणि सहकार्य यापुढे सुद्धा लाभत जाऊ शकतो थँक्यू सर थँक्यू सर येस